What's up? Be a cult. What's up guys? How's it going? So as you guys know, I've been making dubstep like the heavy type drop dubstep for quite a while now. So I've been gravitating towards more of like the melodic side or adding melodies at least. Whenever I do make melodies, I always tend to make melancholy type melodies more in the style of like pop punk and emo tracks. That's what I've grown up listening to. That was like my sh growing up. Like I was like that scene kid or that emo kid. I was like, what if I just go full on like a pop punk type emo feeling track, but with heavy bass influence. So it's still like a heavy bass tune, but the melodies and the feeling is like that darkish um, angst <laughs> feeling. Oh my god, I gotta show you guys this real quick before we get into this. <laughs> Alright, okay, don't judge me, um, but I fucking love this thing so much. Um, <laughs> look what I added to my studio. Dun dun dun. Oh my god. Okay, so, so it's still not done yet. Um, I'm gonna put like fabric over it. So like it's gonna be coming from the walls, but holy <laughs> dude, <laughs> that thing is so gnarly. Oh, by the way, um, I did a poll on his name. So his name is Kenny. What's up, Kenny? <laughs> so today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made my new song, Occult. My hair is just like not working out today. Okay, so when I was starting the track, I really wanted to create um, a dark and eerie melody um, to set the tone for it and kind of give me a guideline and a vibe of where I wanna follow through with. The easiest way to grab eerie tones is literally two main notes that are neighbor notes. I know there's a term for that, but I don't know what it is, but basically I'm gonna be using B and C. So as you can tell right there, those two notes are already pretty dark and you don't need to go too crazy. Um, I like to keep my melody simple, like this. Pretty simple, but that sets the whole vibe. Like I can already feel the song now just by hearing that. And you can even do like small inverted or variations or whatever you want to do to make it more unique, but it'll still have the same feeling. Go right around that. So the next thing to writing any song is building a chord progression or a bass progression. And I like to start with the bass progression because uh, for me it's simpler to get the feeling um, out there um, and then later I can build the chords on top of it. I always like to write my bass progressions with a low passed um, like distorted saw wave. I start with uh, crazy unison, um, low octave, filter, and then um, some OTT. That's that shit right there. And I usually start working from there. I'm gonna leave it like that because that sounds pretty fucking dope. This right here, this is like the fundamental of the track right here. I feel like whenever you're writing a track, as long as you have the bass, the underlying uh, melody and um, chord progression or bass progression, you have the full track. Right after the main melody, I added um, a really like dark but badass sounding um, arp. It kind of like mimics like what a guitar would be doing, you know, like kind of like a breakdown section, what they would do in a heavy pop punk song or emo song. I don't know. I don't know what genre is anymore. It just sounds really dope. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. Listen to a lot of guitar riffs and then try to mimic those because They've spent really spent time on like. I wanted to add chords on top of uh, the song, but whenever I did, it sounded too busy. Like there's too much going on. So what I did is I actually made a seventh chord instead. There's a lot of filters going on to match the song. Hold on, real quick. Um, I made a mistake. I it's not called seventh chord. It's a power chord. I got confused. I'm probably gonna say it again a lot. Um, just replace seventh chord with power chord. 
The easiest way to make a seventh chord, really. Power chord. I just grab the main uh, bass notes. This is just coming from the bass progression. And then I added control C, control V, copy and paste. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventh chord. So since the whole general idea of the song was supposed to be like very dark and creepy and eerie, um, I made a bunch of creepy sounds to fill up the track here and there just to, you know, really make it feel like some shit is gonna end. I made this arp right here. And then the on the serum, it's um, just like slightly detuned. It's still detuned, but like not too much because otherwise it'll sound like... Which is still pretty cool, but I wanted a sort of cleaning this to make it sound like sort of, sort of like a violin going and then a combs to give it like a filter setting because otherwise it'll sound like a bit too um, synthesizing. With the combs, it kind of puts some like twang. And then I use a text to speech program. The occult. The occult. I love using text to speech. This one's funny, the bad news one. The occult. <laughs> Oh, there's a better one. Uh, there was one that kind of sings. It's time to die. I hate my life. <laughs> now, before I show you guys this crazy gnarly drop, I want to let you guys know that I made a new sample pack called the Occult Sample Pack. This sample pack consists of a bunch of basses and melodies and a bunch of different variations of sounds, like creepy sounds and everything, based off this song. So if you like the vibe of this song, if you like creepy, dark, the end of all times energy, then this pack is definitely for you. Now, how to make this drop. Okay, so this bass is probably one of my most favorite type of basses to make. Uh, the techniques is so simple, but the results are amazing. Um, it all starts with, obviously, FM from B, um, from a really high-pitched up um, second uh, oscillator, but using saw, but even um, adding a plus three um, semitones just to add um, harmonics, kind of creating like half chord with your bass. I like to go seven, five, or three when I'm making these harmonic type basses. And then high notch filter to create the vowels. So it's going like that. Always keep the random down so it's constantly producing the same um, sound every time you press the notes. Otherwise, it'll variate. Some simple processing, you know, hyperdimension, distortion, you know, the chorus is even on. Um, combs really help. Otherwise, I mean, it sounds dope without it too. A bit more darker but I want it to scream. So using the combs and the cutoff filter, um, a little bit of automation going like that changes the pitch. <laughs> Lastly, uh, for the final track, I added some processing. Combination of like reverb and um, OTTs and stuff. Um, to be honest, it's kind of like randomly thrown on there. There's no like general process. <laughs> just making it full, you know. We have other weird basses that I basically just tweaked the original sound and did some weird notes with it and it created like some cool variations like Super fun. I was gonna skip this just because I'm like super subconscious and shy, um, but I always wanted to add my vocals to tracks. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you've noticed that I have been putting my voice in tracks, but I would change them up, like, you know, pitch it up or pitch it down. Um, took a lot to get me to be like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna release this. But I, I'm so happy I did, and I'm gonna show you guys how I did this. I have some lyrics coming in filtered in the intro. In here, filtered. Then I have a reverb tail coming in to introduce the first like main vocal of the track. I can't go on living without you. I have listened to this so much because I, I love it that much. Like I feel like there's something special when you love the track that much that so you're just like constantly listening to it. The way I made these vocals, um, I have three layers. Um, I have a top end creating like a harmony. Um, the main melody and then a lower end. So it's like me saying it three times, creating like a width effect as well. So I have a top end melody going. I can't go on living without you. And then I have a second layer that's playing the main melody. I can't go on living without you. And then together with both of those. I like the idea of like making my voice into like chords or a harmony. So the processing of this vocal, I have some basic utility, bringing up the width, um, some chorus for that stereo effect, taking away the, the lows, and some compression, and a little bit of saturation, and finalizing with some 
Valhalla Room Reverb. But before all of that, having a, I, I use Waves Tune to um, just make sure I'm on like a precise key. A couple more, um, just double take, just to add width, and then another lower harmony. And then it all sounds like this. I can't go on living without you. I think uh, Suicide Boys, they do that a lot. Ruby, especially, and oh my god, fucking amazing. Full spectrum. Anyways, I'm only showing the first half of the song because I want you guys to be super surprised and excited for the second part so when it finally comes out. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this and I hope you learned something or just enjoyed watching the process of this song. It really means a lot that you're watching right now. I made a full sample pack based around the theme of this song, so a bunch of presets, basses, melodies, drums, and everything. Um, FX, screams, construction kits, and even an Ableton project file based around this song. I really appreciate all you guys' support and I can't wait to see what you guys make with this pack. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoy the song as well. It's gonna be coming very soon. I'll put the release date very soon. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna keep up to date with everything I'm posting. See you guys in the next video.